Peter, my first question to you is, how did this project come about? Yeah, everybody, uh, when they ask that, I really think back to when I was 15 years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was a freshman in high school. And uh, a senior drove me to school every day. And usually he played pretty crap music, like Winger and Poison. And I, I just would kind of brush it off, like, oh, here's another one of David's terrible tapes. But one day he picked out a white cassette tape, put it in, and... A whole lot of love. And just my brain just exploded, like, what is this song? And then the riff, I just thought it was I obsessed. It was so perfect. And then they came to the bridge, and it was like this band. Any other band would spend a lifetime searching for that one riff like that. And if they had it, they would they would never let it go. They would never change from that riff the whole song. And Led Zeppelin just took that riff, and when it came to the bridge, they just threw it away. And then they got into crazy tabla sort of percussion, and uh, Robert Plant having an orgasm, and a theremin comes in, and my brain was like, what is this? And then John Bonham comes back in the, with the drums, and Jimmy Page has this crazy solo, and oh my God, I can't handle it. And all day long at school, I was just processing this thing that I experienced and really fantasizing, not about a girl, but fantasizing about, I want to go home and listen to that album. Album. Mm -hmm. And so began a 30-year love affair with uh, Jimmy Page and Led Zeppelin that really took another stage when I stumbled across Mr. Jimmy on YouTube and saw him performing Led Zeppelin's 1979 Nebworth arrangements of their amazing concert. Um, and I just recognized all these details, the yellow guitar strap, the blue shirt, the linen pants, the loafers every detail and then you could click on a 1970 performance and he has a fake beard and he's using a high watt amplifier and anything you could possibly think of he's doing and i said i don't know the story but i know there is one i know there is a big story behind this guy and i didn't think i just wrote i just wrote an email straight away to his website in japan and his beautiful wife wrote back you must be a really lucky guy because akio just moved to los angeles <laughs> So I just thought that was God just telling me, you don't have a choice, buddy. Now you got to make it. So that was that. Wow. For me, mm -hmm. to play music on the stage is something like a catch ball. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You fly for ball to mm -hmm. audience, people got big surprise. Wow. <laughs> something like that. Mm -hmm. Wow. Something like that. Mm -hmm. And people get me ball. So I catch the ball, mm. I can more, you know, energy. 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 Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, how to say relationship between audience. That's a live. Mm. If I play just only cover style, uh, studio style, mm. three minute song is always three minute, three minute song. Mm. Four minute song, always four minute song. Nothing mm. change. I don't like that. Mm. <laughs> I want something to happen in the music. Yeah. Yeah, that's oh. a life oh. they did in 1970. Mm -hmm. That's the energy of rock and roll, 1970s. Mm -hmm. Great mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. yeah. <sighs> but after that, nobody can do that. I'm very sad, so that thing. So that's why I want to recreate exact same style show as like uh, mm -hmm. uh, 70s. Yeah. Mm -hmm.